Hi guys, hope you all are doing well. Today's video is going to be about passive design techniques. So let's get right in the video. Passive design techniques maximizes the use of natural light, heat, ventilation, and air movement to create a comfortable indoor condition within a particular environment and reduces the need for energy to light, warm, and cool a building. The increasing use of fossil fuels, natural gas, coal, electricity, etc., have led to increasing production of greenhouse gas. Passive design techniques help us to maintain a comfortable indoor conditions without the use of electricity and non-renewable resources. Passive design techniques are mostly based on climate of a particular place. Some of the common passive design strategies are Emphasis on torch ventilation, more open spaces, heat control, providing optimal insulation, installation of high-performance doors and windows, proper sol solar orientation, etc. Some of the commonly used passive design techniques are wind catchers, solar chimney, roof ponds, evaporative cooling techniques, etc. So, now let's focus on each one of them. Wind catchers. They are mainly used in hot and humid regions for cooling by using air movement. They are tall, tower-like structures with opening in the front to trap the wind. They trap the wind and direct the wind down in the building and creates an air movement. They are often 15 meters above the ground and mainly built using natural building materials and techniques. Next one, the solar chimney. They are also mainly used in hot and humid areas to increase the stack ventilation. The hot air rises up and the cool air occupies their space. This principle is used here. The buildings have openings at one end covered by heat absorbing materials which speeds up this process. Next one, evaporative cooling. This method is mainly used in dry and hot areas. The major problem in these areas is dryness. In order to reduce this dryness, water ponds are installed in front of the building so that the water gets evaporated and increases the humidity level and thus creating a comfortable space. Next one, the thermal mask. They are mainly used in areas where days are hot and nights are cold. The roofs and walls are made with heat absorbent materials and this heat is released at night, thereby cooling the interior. In this way, interior is maintained at comfortable temperature day and night. The thermal walls. They are mainly used in case of hot summer, both day and night require cooling. Thermal wall with night ventilation punctures are adopted. The open system at night allows ventilation to take place. Roof ponds. They are similar to thermal walls. The roof is covered with a movable reflective surface. During the day and it bounces off the sun rays and cools the interior. During the night, the pond is left uncovered and is naturally cooled. Now let's have a look at passive design strategies. In colder regions, the buildings are placed in such a way that the longer side faces the sun. No windows are placed along the wind direction to prevent cold breeze from entering inside. While designing sunshades, both summer and winter sun altitudes are to be considered as summer sun might heat the place too much. The material used should be able to retain this heat inside, however low the outside temperature is. Now, we can discuss each of the strategies. Direct solar gain. Wall apertures allow sunlight to directly enter the building and heat the interior living space. Equator facing windows are specially used for this purpose. In the northern hemisphere, these are placed at 90 degrees facing the southern direction to admit a maximum light as possible. The glazing should be well insulated to prevent the leakage of heat into the exterior. Indirect Solar Gain Indirect solar gain is used to heat passages or spaces which are adjacent to living spaces. Where direct sunlight hits the outer wall, 
and heat the passage which act as a thermal mask and heat the interior wall with less intensity. This design is not preferred much as it blocks view and daylight. Passive design reduces a building's energy demands. It's a chief component of sustainable design. And as its popularity increases, an important tool in the battle against climate change as a whole. Stay connected with us for more such videos. Do like, share and subscribe. Till then, bye and see you in the next video.